Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then give it a thumbs up, hit the bell notification button, um, and the subscribe button, obviously. But yeah, I read a buttload of books this week, and then like 20 minutes after I posted the wrap-up last week, on last Sunday, I realized I forgot to review one of the books. Um, and it was because it's an, it's an only digital book um, available in digital format, so it just wasn't there and I wasn't thinking, and yeah. So I have eight books, I think. So I'm going to be as brief as possible while I'm still giving my thoughts on these books. Um, so if the video is long, that is why. I promise I am doing my darndest to condense it, but there's a lot of books that I read. So starting off last week, the book that I missed uh, doing a review for was Fledgling by Molly Harper. This is the sequel to Changeling, which I just picked up on a whim like a year ago because it was an audible daily deal. So for like a dollar and 95 cents or $2 and 95 cents or something like that, I read change. Like it is not in any way unique, the series. However, I love it. It's, it's, it's the, the good tropes. It's the good premises. It's the good plots that, that I know I thoroughly enjoy in YA. So, uh, Changeling and, 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 and Fledgling are honestly, they remind me a lot of charmed meets Harry Potter sort of situation. Um, we have a main character who has powers, who she's from a class in society in their world, which shouldn't. So they pretend that she uh, is royal, well, noble, we'll say, um, and put her in the school. And the school has some sketchy stuff going down. And that is a continuation of it. And I, I can't really say much about it because it very much to be leans on the, the ending plot of Changeling. But it is... It's not unique, but if you enjoy like kind of boarding school magic, they're short books, they're brief, they're succinct, they're to the point. I don't see anything problematic in them. The characters are light and fun. There's nothing too deep. You don't have to think a lot about the magic system or anything like that. This is a good book series to do that with. I I think there's going to be a third book. I will definitely keep an eye out for that. And I kind of tempted to try Molly Harper's other books, even though like one of them's literally been called like was it seducing the naked vampire or the naked werewolf or something like that? I just randomly found her because uh, in the TBR Beyond group every other Friday, I do a WTF Friday, just weird things we find on the internet. And one of her books is like seducing the, the wer naked werewolf or something like that. And I was like, okay, but now I kind of want to read it. And then I picked up my arc for Tiger Queen by Annie Sullivan this week. I was so hopeful I would get to it this month. And I did. Huzzah. And this is Annie's uh, standalone. It's not a part of A Touch of Gold. A Touch of Gold is getting a sequel. I think 2020 is the date for that. Um, so this is like a standalone in between. And it's a retelling of Frank Stockton's famous short story, The Lady or the Tiger. I, it says famous. I've literally never heard of his name. Not even in like passing. Like I, I've just never heard of it. Um, so apparently it's very, very short. And you can like read it online. So I want to eventually read that. So it, but I mean, in itself, it's not um, a large book. I think it's 280. So in the briefest of ways, there is a, a princess living in the desert. Her father kind of runs the kingdom and they're in a drought. So there's a lot of water rationing going on. Um, and they're kind of seeing her as the savior. And her family has some beef with um, they're called like kind of the desert boys that they go in and steal the water that is being rationed. And then in, in like re in retaliation of it, they have to ration the water more for the general public, right? Because of that. And those boys years ago, she was told that they killed her, her mother and her newborn uh, baby brother. So her entire thing is she's almost of marrying age. And I think they said it's like for a year. She has to beat someone in like a gladiator dome essentially uh, she has to beat one person a month and if she wins then she moves on to the next round she has to do it for a year and then if she doesn't get defeated in the whole year then they see it as she's earned the right to be the next like queen ruler emperor of their community and if she loses she has to marry the the suitor that she loses to so we pick up this book when she's um about to face the 11th of the 12 suitors she will have to and that is all I will tell you about this it was really enjoyable the only thing I would note is there's not a ton of dialogue in it so it is a little bit slower of a read than something um I don't know what was like something like um A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn they're pretty similar size books but um A Curious Beginning was just easier for, and faster for me to read because there's a ton of 
dialogue. This one is more descriptive. Um, I was thirsty a lot of this book. <laughs> um, it gave me a lot of reminders of Aladdin, parts of it. Um, uh, several of the Aladdin movies actually just kind of kept coming into my mind as well as the newer Aladdin adaptation was coming in. I kept seeing a little bits of like Scorpion King and the Mummy as well in here. Basically anything set in the desert. I feel like there were elements of it um, which I really enjoyed. I liked the main character too. She's not obtrusively dense. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Like I find a lot of characters when they're told something when they grow up like that is like they that they act as if like it's it's mind-boggling that it's not all true and everything they were raised on isn't all true and i feel like she's a character that learns quickly um and and realizes quickly the situation that she's in i think the ending was a little bit um too not clean i think the epilogue was too short um which i know epilogue is supposed to be short i just don't know that it was necessary in the length that it was in that's really my only critique of that i like the main characters i do kind of wish the romance hadn't been put in i don't think it was really necessary um because they were already the characters were tied together because of the benefit of them being tied together and their plots overlapping i don't think the romance is totally necessary but it is there and it's not you know it's not really unlikable and it's not too prominent so it didn't bother me that much so in the end i really enjoyed this i think i gave this a four out of five stars then i picked up a wicked king by holly black this is the sequel to the cruel prince and i decided like i didn't hate the cruel prince so i'll read the wicked king since i have it from the library absolutely will say this was way better than the cruel prince this book was way way better maybe it's because everything was already set up but just the plot the characters the conflicts the you know me trying to guess things not being able to figure out where it was going it was just really 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 like leaps and bounds ahead of of the cruel prince um the ending oh boy that's an ending um and i can't really say much about the plot it continues from exactly where the cruel prince ends off and, it, and the cruel prince ends off in a big way so i can't say anything about that i enjoyed this i think i'll read the queen of nothing when it comes out and i get a library copy for sure um yeah, uh, I think I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5 stars. It was really enjoyable, honestly. Honestly? Honestly? It was really enjoyable, honestly. I then picked up, oh, I was so excited to read this, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Morona Garcia. So she is Mexican-Canadian, actually, the author. I found out she lives in Canada, which is so cool. We I love finding out when there's Canadian authors. Um, everyone's been super hyped about this book over the last like, couple weeks in like the book subscription community and a lot of the book clubs that I've been in. So it is an adult book, but I wasn't totally sure what I was getting into. I love this cover so much. I wish they had done gold instead of like a yellow um, like orangey yellow here. Other than that, this cover is awesome. Um, but this is another one that kind of reminded me a little bit of The Mummy. Um, it was a weird week this week. Um, but our main character, it's sort of a Cinderella situation that her mother had her, um, well, she was conceived out of wedlock. And her mother had her, um, she is the daughter of someone not in her mother's social class, shall we, shall we say. Um, and he passes away, so they have to move back with her family, uh, her, her grandparents and everything like that. And it's a Cinderella situation that she's used as a maid in the house. And when cleaning, her uncle has this chest that he always has the key locked, um, and she's never been able to access it. So when he leaves and she's left alone, she out of curiosity opens it, and then we have a mummy situation. That's where the mind god of death comes in. And then there's this, like, decades, centuries-long beef between certain gods, and it's kind of trying to resolve resolve that. Um, it's It's... At first I was like, wow, this is not a long book, but I feel like it's actually a, a, the perfect size. It doesn't need to be longer um, than it is. I like all the adventuring and the traveling around the area we get to do. I love the time period. I know of like the jazz flapper, like 1930s-ish era, um, but I've never thought of it, what it was like in somewhere like Mexico. I think the pace is pretty medium to low for the most part for like the whole book. So don't go in expecting a lot of high pacedness. I, that doesn't really happen. It's more maneuvering and the character standing out. I loved, loved, loved the main character. She's so smart and so witty and so snazzy and sarcastic, especially for 1930s being like used as a maid in her family. I loved the whole conflict and I just this was a really cool cultural piece to get to see um, Mexican culture Mexican geography in in a book I honestly don't read a lot of books with that in it I'll be in totally honest it's just I feel like if there is a lot, a lot of Latina rep it's normally like set in the United States 
So this was really, really cool and wonderful, and I enjoyed it. It was exactly the pacing, everything that I wanted and needed when I read it. Then I picked up Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. Ha! This was such a wonderful surprise read. So I think I read this literally on the, on the last day or second last day of the month. And it's, originally I was telling like in, in our group and whatever that Red, White, and Royal Blue was my favorite of the month, read of the month in July, which it really, it, it's a fantastic read. I think Eve of Man nudged it out though. So this whole con, like this whole concept is just interesting to me. In this world, women suddenly stop being able to have females like they stop having girls um and the population just goes haywire so for 50 years women only have sons and um there's it's a dystopian future where we wake up where it all starts when someone after 50 years has a baby girl and it's what we would do to make sure that baby girl survives so that the human race can survive but over those 50 years, things have changed and science has been brought in and there's some dystopian government, there's some rebels, there's some religious uh, fanatics, all kind of wrapped up in this conflict. And then Eve, who that is what they name um, the girl who was born, there she's feeling this pressure to, she has to procreate. And it's, 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 in, it, it's somehow like this book is almost 500 pages. It's really fast paced the whole time. And it's, it's got a lot of like sci-fi elements for sure. Like there's like essentially all these made robot things in this world, as well as like she's been brought up in like these like ideal specifications to make sure she's always healthy and she has all these doctor visits and the concept of like fertility and in vitro. And it really, this whole thing isn't like we need to like impregnate her nonstop. That is not, it really does question this an awful lot. And it's something that Eve brings up an awful lot of like, what if I don't want children? How, when do I get to decide if I want children? How, how do I raise them? Are you taking them? Are they going to be my kids? Like, why are all these decisions being made for me? And I feel like that's really relevant to, to current, uh, to current North America, at least, uh, to say. And then there is the flip side that we have a character named Bram, who his father created these robots that are there to like made and nurse her basically and be her friend. And he, he, Bram has been like pretending to be the robot. They, they, this is his job and things aren't just what they see. We'll leave it at that. It's so good. It's so good. I love Brim and Eve together and separately as characters. I love their brains. I love the science of this. I like the questions and the morals raised in this. Um, I just, it's so incredibly interesting to me, this, this whole concept. And I am so excited so excited for the sequel i cannot wait for that and if someone had mentioned this on litzy to me too of like is it like i was concerned based on like the premise that it was going to have that me that mentality of like a woman's body is just there for like to be the uterus it's it's not that it, it's absolutely not that way i also picked up the beholder by anna bright this week i originally thought this was a standalone it's not it's at least a duology um this was pitched a, a, in a lot of different places as the selection meets um, the Iliad, I think it was. So our main character is like the uh, going to be kind of someone high up in her local society, but they're forcing her to try and get married. And it starts off with the book when someone locally, the only person that she's ever been interested in, rejects her proposal. And so she gets sent on this, well, we're going to set up all these like potential suitors for you. And her stepmother is doing this. She doesn't get along with her stepmother. Her stepmother is very heavily pregnant um and she's done doing some sketchy things so essentially they're like she's trying to push her out of the picture right the book itself it's not bad i think i ended up giving it a three out of five stars it is predictable it has been written before i literally sent my friend three bullet points things i was like this this and this are going to happen in the book i guarantee you and i got to the end i was like oh it's not done yet it's a, it's a duology so one of the points i don't know if it will be correct yet but literally all the two of the other ones were had already been like done yeah i think the characters are okay enjoyable my real beef with this is i'm i struggled this whole book through trying to understand the geography and time period of this book they use the terms like the new world and you know england and europe and mainland and all this stuff so i'm yeah, they and like Potom pot 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 potomac I don't know if that's a real place or not. I I couldn't, I can't really, even like having read the book now, I can't geographically figure out where the heck this book is supposed to have taken place. It is in our world. Um, and like there's references to Deutschland and all that stuff. So I'm assuming like it Deutschland, because they reference Germany. Germany wasn't a country 
until like very very previous like very 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 like quickly before the world war so like they were all germanic provinces so i'm str seriously struggling with that with the time period and the geography i don't understand a lot of that and but they're sailing a lot so it has to be somewhere coastal it's just kind of messed with me um not enough to really to deter from that uh but it was very predictable even for someone like me very very predictable and i think at the end too of like there's two main romances the first one was better and then we get to the end and then the second one is where the book ends and i'm like eh can we go back to the first one? <laughs> three out of five stars i think i'll read the sequel but i'm I'm glad I, I borrowed it from the library. I definitely won't reread this. Then I very quickly threw in Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Loventhaler. I've read this book on this channel a million times before. I love this book so much. It's fun. It's quick. It's witty. Banter. Love it. Love it. Five out of five stars. Then I picked up Teeth in the Mist by Don Kurtigich. This is a horror book. I I read Saw Kill earlier um, or in July, um, but having read Saw Kill, it's more of like a paranormal suspense mystery, less less like a, of a horror. This is a horror. I would highly recommend you listen along with the audiobook for this. There's this like demonic voice, like creaking noises and everything going on. I can't sleep now without thinking of a woman in a corner in a rocking chair, which is always a fun thing to wake up to when you live alone and have the most useless two dogs as your guard dogs. It's got multiple different timelines, but it's like this, it's a continuation each timeline of a prophecy that started when like the devil is contacted and it's weird. And there is female-female romance in this, which I really, really liked it, actually. I liked all the different timelines. The audiobook is really well done with that, I think. The, there's multiple um, characters being... There are multiple narrators for each character. So it's pretty um, pretty distinct uh, which, you know, timeline you're in if you're only listening to the audiobook. Uh, there's also these, like, really kind of in the actual physical book. Like, some of them are diary entries from one of the timelines. So there's pictures. Um, and it's it's very creepy like oh it's the it gave me the eebie-jeebies especially like the someone told me i said that wrong is it heebie-jeebies or eebie-jeebies either way um it's um yeah there's it's just very creepy and weird and like i enjoyed it though it was really a really fun enjoyable read for me and yeah i i actually really recommend this even if you don't like horrors i think this could be kind of a even you, you don't have to get into the horror genre now but i feel like this is a good one that even if you don't like it you're probably going to enjoy this it's a really solid book and we know how i feel about books with multiple timelines and plvs i love them so thoroughly enjoy this i think i gave this a five out of five stars there's really nothing i can think of to complain about and lastly I read The Devouring Grey by Christina Lynn Herman. Um, this is book one. I think there's going to be at least one more book. And I this cover is so cool. And the under dust jacket is just with the like gray and the teal and then the end pages being the woods and whatever. This is another one. I thought it was going to be more of a horror, but it ended up being more of a paranormal mystery suspense thing. And that being said, I enjoyed it. It's pretty quick. Um, it's it's not a long book by any means, especially reading this after right after Teeth in the Mist. I liked the characters. There's some um, bisexual rep, and it's kind of hinted at near the end, but it's never like specifically labeled. But two of the female characters have like a bond beyond friendship, so I'm assuming they're hinting that that is going to be a female female romance going forward. We shall see but this was a really interesting i liked the this concept of like essentially like at a certain age get like tested um they're like the pioneers they're the descendants of the pioneers that like founded the town um and they have to protect the town from the gray which is this like weird paranormal forest that like there's a demon in and they're supposed to keep the demon at bay and then there's this weird religious cult locally and it's weird I enjoyed it though. I, I I think it's kind of balancing somewhere between like three and a half and five, uh, three and a half out of, out of five stars and four. I think I'll probably put it as four stars on Goodreads, but I think it's more of a 3.5. I really enjoyed this. So this is a really impressive debut for me as well. Like it, it didn't find a lot of trip ups that I, I tend to notice. Authors are still trying to find like their stride and, and, and what they want maybe to be their kind of signature thing. And, and and how and why you make characters do certain things that you see in certain debuts and you're like, oh, this was definitely debut work. <laughs> um, and this one doesn't really, it didn't really trip up like that, which was really impressive. And I will absolutely be reading the sequel. And this is a gorgeous cover. This would be a really fun read, I, I think, to read in October as well. So those are all the books that I read this week slash one that I forgot the week before. Let me know what you read this week. I'd love to know. And if you read any of these, I'd love to know what you thought of them. 
I will link all of these books in the description down below and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.